Village of the Angels is possibly one of the better Weeping Angel stories we've had. Granted, we haven't actually had, like, a lot. We've had Blink, we've had Flesh and Stone, we've had Angels Take Manhattan, and now this, if I'm not mistaken, has been one, one really good one, but whatever, whatever, whatever. On the context of television so far, I think this is right up there with Blink, and I think, for me... I still like um, the Flesh and Stone crash of the Byzantium story better. This episode here sort of takes everything we know about the Weaving Angels and cranks it up to 11. Oh, anything that has that takes the image of an angel becomes an angel. Well, that also implies to torn pieces of paper. And <laughs> that's crazy. It turns out that if you get touched by an angel, if, if an angel touches you and sends you back in time, you get touched again, you just die. <laughs> um, like, just flat out disintegrate. And... That's sort of all right, but the problem is there are too many angels in the story. And by that, I mean, it's hard to believe anyone could survive this. Like any other time this happens, and I don't think Angels Take Manhattan did this well either, but I think the Flesh and Stone story did as well, is there has to be more distance between the people and the angels. Otherwise, I don't believe for a moment anyone should have survived this. Like with um, the, the Byzantium story. We have a bunch of weekend weeping angels slowly waking up. The Doctor and company are able to create distance and use a bunch of sort of advanced ship technology to lock the doors and whatnot. All of that is fine. Helps stretch everything out. And then, of course, there's a whole, you know, there's an angel in Amy's eye taking her over. Great stuff. Great stuff. Here, uh, there's, what do you mean there's like 20 outside? Oh, what do you mean? I'm sorry, more than 20 outside? All right, well, good thing we've got these windows and, you know, they're all made of stone, so they could probably break through that wooden door. But no, we'll just lock it. <laughs> no, 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 no. The premise of this episode is great, though. Using the angels to sort of explain the mysterious disappearances that happen in certain towns. And set up with a simple premise of, hey, a girl goes missing. This leads to a weeping angel story. That's great. The um, guardians of this child were kind of terrible. Gerald and Jean were terrible i like i don't get how anyone was supposed to enjoy this other than taking satisfaction at them going away the bigger story going on here i felt was great to see dan and yaz what happened to them i think is was was fun i'm trying to figure out how they're gonna get out of this because this episode ends with them not getting out of it but at the same time again that smaller weeping angel story it feels like the angels take manhattan idea but we just sort of scaled it down but also somehow up the ante instead of one granted angels take manhattan had a giant angel for no reason other than well this is getting out of hand so let's sort of skip all this and go to the spoilerific stuff like the spice of this episode first we're going to mention professor jericho professor jericho has to be the greatest character in the chibnall era i'm sorry ryan yaz graham grace ruth no, no, you, you, you've been, you've all been forgettable to like, all right, but Professor Jericho, no, no, this is, this is top tier. This is, th this Chad level guy, no, no, this is, this is worth fighting for. Anyway, anyway, so this episode is about an, the angel that took over the TARDIS in the last episode and transported them here. It turns out the angels are looking for Claire, or particularly the angel inside Claire. She's a rogue angel. And she has information on the Division because it turns out the Division has recruited the Angels before. They're still recruiting them. So, yeah, that that's fun. And this Rogue Angel has information on the Division's secrets, information, the Doctor's past, like all of it. All the stuff the Doctor doesn't know. This is some great, some great bait to get the Doctor involved and in not just removing the Angel from Claire. And I think that should have been played up more. The idea that the Doctor is sort of really... Um, considering just letting the angel stay inside Claire, but it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't go anywhere because there's too much going on from a plot point in this episode. There's like, like you know, at least 50 more angels outside. We can't, we can't, we can't spend time mulling over this. Just got to get the information. But with that in mind, so wh where does the doctor go? This is where the, I think the episode falls apart because the doctor doesn't have an answer to this. Like she gives a whole like you know she tries to you know. The Doctor doesn't really have a real leg up in this competition with the Angels. All she's really doing is just, okay, i got to figure out why the Angels are after Claire. And they're like, oh, okay, they're after the Angel inside Claire. And the Angel, I can't actually get the Angel out of there. So, 
what? I have to protect the angel and Claire. And I don't have a real way to do that because they've already taken the TARDIS. I've already gotten control of that. She hasn't had much control over the TARDIS since this season started. So she has very little to go off of here. And then, of course, when the episode sort of comes together, the idea of why this village is the way it is, why um, the little girl Peggy was taken, all of that comes together. And you still sort of realize the Doctor has had no control over this story. She hasn't. And from a Weeping Angel standpoint, that's fine. Um, the Doctor's never been one to say, okay, I know how to stop the Weeping Angels. Like, no, no. The Weeping Angels have always sort of had an edge on the Doctor, especially when there's a lot of them. One or two, the Doctor can usually, you know, find a way out. But no, multiple ones, no. And there's sort of a problem with the Angels here because we've cranked it all up to, like, like level 11 with what they can do. So how does anyone stop them? Outside of like, ooh, get them to look at each other, look at a mirror. But even then, if you get them looking at a mirror, the the mirror image would become an angel. So the only way that would work would be if the angel comes out and isn't still looking at the other angel. So, yeah. Yeah, it, it's crazy itself. So the ending is weird to me. So this is a bigger spoiler warning. So the rogue angel decides to not take the doctor up on her offer and, said, and instead offer her to the division and they turn her into a weeping angel and i just don't quite get why because the doctor has no out to any of this it's not like screwdriver can has never done anything to the angels and they can just go all right so we're just going to send you back to another area where there's no tardis or anything and you're stuck like she's basically stuck here so it was done for visual effect so we'll see what happens now i think i'd be more surprised if this was the season finale imagine this is how the season ended like, at some point, Doctor Who has to end on massive cliffhangers for the season. Like, imagine if the season finale for season one had been Spyfall. Like, you know, and we, if this, the season ends with the Doctor finding out about the Thomas Child from the Master and finding out Gallifrey's been destroyed. And they're like, oh, by the way, the season's over now. See you later. That would have been great. Also, there's some stuff with Azure and, and what's been going on with Belle and Vinder and that story. I'm waiting to see how this all plays out overall i would say as a doctor Who episode it was it was all right as a weeping angel story it's up there but again because this is all one big story we have to really see how it plays out one of these episodes is not gonna look good at the end of this so anyway with that in mind this brings me to close you if you knew the bucket think tank feel like comment share subscribe check some of my videos and i'll catch you all later this is the bucket think tank signing off thanks for watching as always may your fandom serve you well